And the jury is still out on whether faults also pose a threat to the country's only two operating reactors. Geologists are preparing to dig some more at the Oi nuclear plant in central Japan in the hope of finding more conclusive evidence. Experts from the Nuclear Regulation Authority have twice since November examined trenches at the Oi plant. They remain divided over whether fissures found at the site are active faults or the result of landslides. The regulators asked the plant's operator to dig a new trench closer to the reactors. Engineers with the utility say they will inspect underground layers and report their findings by mid-July. The regulators say they're ready to order a shutdown of the plant if the presence of an active fault is confirmed. Experts with Japan's nuclear regulator have thrown another wrench into plans to put some power plants back online. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority have been looking at six complexes to see if they're stable. They found the one near the village of Higashidori may be sitting on active faults. NHK World Susumu Kojima reports. The regulators dug into the ground. They found volcanic ash. They concluded that something underfoot was not stable. They say two faults could be active. The plant's operators have a different view. They say cracks around the fault were caused by groundwater. The experts say there's little evidence to support that view. We don't have a thorough explanation from the utility. We'll have to listen to what they have to say. The regulators say they may need to check the structure of the plant, and they may ask managers to review measures to protect the plant against earthquakes. Those findings could keep the plant offline for some time to come. Operators say they'll conduct another additional survey of their own. We would like to confirm through our geological research that there is no active fault under the plant. Experts say the Tsuruga plant on the Sea of Japan coast may also be sitting atop active faults, and they are looking at four other nuclear facilities. 48 of Japan's 50 commercial reactors are still offline. The people who run the plants are working hard to prove they are safe. But the latest findings suggest restarting some of them may prove to be more difficult than some thought. Susumu Kojima, NHK World, Tokyo. Anywhere in coastal Japan is vulnerable to tsunami, even Tokyo. One local government is preparing for such an emergency. Officials in Minato Ward plan to select public facilities and private buildings as emergency shelters. Ward officials ran through a disaster simulation in December. They predicted what would happen if an earthquake struck under Tokyo and a tsunami of up to 1.5 meters hit the ward. Water would rise that high if gates on Tokyo Bay couldn't be closed. The officials will choose shelters from among buildings already designated as disaster centers. Workers will put up signs to help residents find the buildings and stockpile food and water. We should do more than just choose the locations for these shelters. We need to make sure that everybody knows the drill. Ward officials are planning to hold evacuation drills before the end of the year. People in Japan's northernmost island say they don't want a nuclear plant near them. Hokkaido residents ask the government to stop building a facility. Electric Power Development Company, or J-Power, is constructing the plant in Oma on Japan's main island. The town is 23 kilometers by sea from Hakodate in Hokkaido. Work was stopped after the 2011 quake. It was resumed in October 2012. Heads of Hakodate and five other cities submitted the request to the gov uh, central government. 
I don't think there's any need for the construction to go forward. The mayor also said people are worried about the safety of the plant because it's just across the water. City officials say they're considering filing a lawsuit to demand a stop to the construction. Now, Abe is busy back at home as well. The prime minister is brainstorming to make Japanese industry more competitive. He asked for ideas from a panel of business people, academic leaders, and cabinet ministers. Abe wants measures to promote agricultural exports and clean energy. The panel gathered on Monday night to discuss economic growth in three fields, agriculture, energy, and science and technology. We see agriculture as a growth sector and will promote it as an industry. Abe asked for measures to increase exports of agricultural and marine products. Some members said Japan should make it a target to become the world's number three in agricultural production and exports in 10 years. The prime minister also asked for ideas to reform Japan's electric power structure. He's looking at splitting the businesses of electricity generation and power supply.